one. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. <laughs> God. Tell them what, what we're talking about today. This fucking All right. nightmare. A computer composite of 183 serial killers. You see, in your world, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but in my world, killing it. But now, he's leaving the virtual world for hours. Welcome to the real world. I think I'm gonna like it here. Uh, I show you Dark City, and then you pick this film. This was I'm your sorry. choice. It's okay. I'm sorry. I remembered it being cool too, though. Um, so. One's digital. Kill my wife, my daughter. The others, the law. Where's my gun? Hey, Parker. This one's for you! You said the word virtuosity. I'm like, the light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. did I mention this during you said that film? This, you said this first. And oh, okay. Then, and then, and like, then like, a light bulb went off. Immediately, I'm like, oh my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watched this, like, like... A billion times. 300 times, at least, when I was about 11 years old. 1995. I didn't see this in theaters. You didn't? Okay. No, no, because I was too young to see this. This was rated R. Um, so, yeah. You didn't no. have cool parents that let you watch well, R-rated no, my, movies? My, it's funny. So the first time I saw this, I rented it from Blockbuster. And for all you kids out there that don't have... They're like, what, don't the, have, fuck, what, what the what fuck is, is a Blockbuster? Blockbuster? Imagine the perfect video store. It would have a great selection, right? Right! Over 10,000 videos. Three evening rentals, so no rush, no hassle. Welcome to Blockbuster Video! Is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. Video. I'm sure you probably won't hear about this movie at all because, you know, you can filter through good movies now through iTunes or however you get them. iTunes is definitely how they're doing it. <laughs> are yeah, they doing they're it? loving is that what, it through iTunes. Is that yeah. what the kids are doing? I don't know. I kids mean, love that iTunes. God, <laughs> Netflix, probably, yeah. <laughs> no, this is not on Netflix. It's not? No, I checked. Before, yeah, they don't... before, before committing to actually it buying might've... this movie again, I checked to see if it's on Netflix. Yeah. Which was that movie on Amazon? Uh, Five bucks? No, it was $7.99. $7.99? Okay, yeah. well, you're probably. Prime. About, Prime. They wanted to get it to me as quickly as possible. About three dollars too expensive. Yeah, you got ripped off. Uh, this is like one of those films. This is the one that you find at the bottom of the bins at the Walmart. At, at, yeah, the, yeah Walmart. the big Walmart I bins. Late, I'm sure with this uh, god awful box art too. I mean, with the original poster, and I'm, you know, we'll probably have this like right behind us. This, this is amazing. it. Oh my God, Denzel! Wow. Whoa, just it's just Denzel. He looks so young. He... <laughs> poster. It looks better than this. It looks like a ninth grader put this together. They could, yeah, no, Photoshop. they clearly didn't give a fuck about this movie. Like they just like let's just put <laughs> Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington, and it doesn't even look like if you just saw this, you wouldn't even know this is a weird kind of futuristic yeah, movie like about virtual. No, this no, looks no. like a cop film. No, so this looks like yeah, every other action cop film. You know, they downplayed and, how shitty, the crazy yes, this movie but is. But Denzel is clearly in focus where Russell Crowe, they pulled him out. It looks like a... This seems like it's from the posters that they have this asset and yes. this is a still from the movie. Yeah. Probably off of Poorly. the VHS. Because the transfer on this Blu-ray looks like Poorly. VHS transfer. They just they just immediately wanted to get it on Blu-ray and just... Uh, there was you know. no upresing. There no. was no digit like it's not, color correcting. No, no. They didn't tell us any of this shit. No, they were just like, you know, output. It's boom. not it's not like the, the, the 14th time Michael Mann has re-released Heat. Here we go. Say the coffee can. Say thank you. I mean, it does star mm. Denzel Washington. Which, which, by the way, I have to. Russell Crowe. So you would think this is a triple A. No, 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 no. But, but that's but the thing. Russell Crowe was not he big was yet. Not a big, not a big actor in the states yet. This is like this his is first American. Film. First or second American film. Pre LA, what was it? Pre LA Confidential. So after, soon after this, he started to get some attention, some traction from LA Confidential, mm -hmm. and then he did Insider. Yeah. And then I hadn't recognized him. I didn't see any of those movies until it was Gladiator and Proof of Life, both in 2000. Yeah. And then, uh, like a light bulb clicked, and I realized, oh my God, it's it's Sid 6.7. It's Russell Crowe. I mean, he goes full 10 in this movie. He goes, like, he's bananas. He's bananas. That's, that's a term. <laughs> that's a term. He, he, He's bananas in this film. On your knees! Shut up! I was telling Adam, the last time I saw it was 
when I was 12. Like, you would watch a VHS tape like 10 times. So yeah. like, I probably saw this terrible movie. <laughs> Until it melted in Until it VCR. melted in my VCR, but at, when I was 12, and then I never watched it again, because probably the next year, mm. Ace Ventura 2 or 1 or something came out. Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, on video, rated PG-13. But now we should probably go into like, what the heck fuck this movie is about, because this yeah. is so confusing. We've been right. rambling uh, on. All right, I got a timer. Four minutes starting. Start, okay. So the movie opens up with, Girl. they're in a the subway, they're in a virtual, virtual but we don't know this yet. And there are all these businessmen just though. walking everywhere. And that's what they notice. They're like, oh, there's something weird going on. All right, well, let's let's keep going. And then they go up and it's uh, Century City. <laughs> Denzel and his partner are like supposedly looking like cops. They're, sexy cops. They're, they're wearing leather. They're wearing sexy leather. Yeah. They are looking for a serial killer. Yeah. Russell Crowe. They're, they're looking for Russell Crowe and, and they see a clue and it's like a smiley face emoji. It's a smiley face it's a emoji. Side, yeah. side emoji that you sign Gotta off. Gotta keep going, Adam. Gotta go and, fast. All right, so <laughs> into the sushi bar and you see Russell Crowe. Uh, attack so him, but attack him. And his friend dies. He knocks him out. He's like, I'm just gonna do a little performance piece with your partner. I'll be back to do my solo with you. And he's like, oh, you broke the rules. You cheated. Oh, you cheated. Oh, you're absolutely right. Oh! This right. is the worst synopsis <laughs> ever. So, so they, they both leave the machine and they're like having seizures and their brain is like scrambled. And how Turns much out this isn't real. They're in a virtual they're in a, machine. They're in a virtual Denzel's VR. a convict. Yes. He is on death row. They're testing out this virtual machine. Machine that they, they have a training machine for uh, law enforcement. Right. Denzel is, used to be a cop. He says, you know, he will <laughs> test this out for them and then he will get his sentence like reduced. Reduced, yeah. I'll give them what they want, Billy. I'll be their guinea pig. Yeah, so they bring him back to prison after his friend, who was also in there, who was also a convict, is killed. Yeah. <laughs> we lost him. All right, time is 1527. Adam, just listening to this, I already know that this is not going to make any <laughs> sense. So I'm just going to I'm gonna stop the clock here and then just be like, this is what the virtuosity is, is basically the synopsis is, and not going into too much detail because we'll break it down scene by scene, is... He is an ex-convict, he used to be a cop, and he's testing out a virtual machine that's supposed to test cops. Mm -hmm. He gets a deal to reduce his sentence, and then well, Russell Crowe, he's a virtual program, a training program that's yeah. all these serial killers, he doesn't yeah. know that yet. He gets brought into the real world, but because he escapes into the real world, and he's a real life virtual program that's all these killers, and then Denzel now, because of that one time mm -hmm. that he was went through the scenario, is now sent to catch him. Mm -hmm. He teams up with a therapist who knows about oh serial God. killers. The worst, worst, worst actress. The worst actress therapist. They team up and they chase down Russell Crowe as he's murdering people. Stop the clock. That's the basis of the film. Immediately the movie opens and it's like a blurry shot with these terrible 90s texts and then they're in this awful like pre-matrix like scenario with all these like clones walking around and there's glitches you see them noticing it so you as the audience are brought in and you kind of like don't know what this is yet yeah you... but you know now because we're we've seen the matrix in other better films since yeah but in the 90s i'm sure like this was different you're like Oh, what's going on? Why is everything glitching? Why are there people walking through each other? I'm sure people didn't know because at that time it was 95. It was pre-Matrix, so it was just that idea. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy for them. Then you see it's pulled back that it's like Denzel's in this weird Assassin's Creed like get up thing where he's like lifted up and stuff and the other convict is in there with him. They go against Russell Crowe in a sushi bar, which yeah. is like the most batshit action 90s scene I've ever well, apparently, seen. Apparently, I guess in the program, like he's programmed to love sushi. I didn't like, know if that he, was like a CGI it? tongue or if that was like a, I think a was Russell Crowe tongue. tongue because it was like, it's so long. They do all this weird shit with his face where it's like they do fake CGI all over. Yeah. It looks he's, fucking he's, terrible. He's glitching out. <laughs> he's glitching out, yeah. I'm losing too much of myself. After he leaves this VR machine, he's having this back and forth, this backstory with his friend by William Forsythe. His name is William Cochran. And they work together, and it's established that they were like buddies. Yeah, they both were on the force back in the day. Yeah. It's good seeing you back in uniform. 
even if it was only VR. So we're introduced to Sid 6.7. Yeah. He's this crazy, maniacal program, one of which who's really into fashion. Anywhere in the movie, he's rummaging through suits, looking for yeah. the fashion. So they, they're like, all right, Sid, he's in the real world. He, he's causing some chaos. Yeah. You know, who better to let out of this prison than, than Denzel, Denzel Washington, Washington? Who dealt with him once. What? Who had this one VR experience and failed. But, but like, he knows him. <gasps> he knows him. I know you. The deal is, you catch Sid, you're you're free. You're a free man. Mm -hmm. You don't catch him, you're gonna have to serve out the rest of your sentence. Mm -hmm. he, Which he comments on. You wanna tag me like I'm some kind of animal? You want me to go out and risk my life to clean up your mess? And if Sid doesn't kill me and I don't catch him, all I got to look forward to is my 17 back in the penitentiary. That's what y'all telling me? That's the deal. He opts to go right. after Sid. They team him up with this therapist who met him earlier after the prison riot. We kind of missed that scene, which was awful anyways. Yeah. No need to talk. This therapist is basically sidekick throughout the whole movie. She's not that great. She's pretty much the only characteristics about her. She's a terrible mother. They establish that. They, she leaves yeah, her kids. The, well, that's the only thing that you really need to establish <laughs> in this movie is she's a horrible, horrible mother. mother. Yeah. She leaves her kids every 10 seconds with <laughs> she, anyone. She doesn't know where her daughter is and she's sitting Half in the, the time, car. She's sitting Multiple scenes. She's sitting in the car with Parker Barnes, with Denzel, and... Who she just met, basically. Who she just met. That just got out of prison. How are you doing? Why don't you come inside? Uh. Sorry, right, her daughter's sitting in this car with a convict. With the convict, yeah, and she just leaves him, and then she's like, what'd you guys talk about? And it's like, he could've been, you know, molesting you, your kid. Did, yeah, yeah, did you know he has a gun? Yeah. <laughs> There she is. You've got to keep your eye on her. She's got a gun. So they team up with her because, again, like, you would think they would send a whole SWAT team or maybe the army after this superhuman virtual yeah. blue goo glass eating machine thing. But no, they send Denzel Washington, yeah. an ex-cop, and a therapist after him. Mm -hmm. That's the team that they decide <laughs> to do. I mean, it makes sense, right? Yep. Who are you, you going to send to after a synthetic... Uh, Serial killer. Sounds good to me. Logic's making sense in this film. The next thing, he goes to a club. He's Super 90s club. Amazing outfit. Uh, right, right outside of a railroad track and how yeah. cool and edgy that is. Yes, so cool. Sid, Sid walks up to this club. He's he's looking at people's suits. He's like, all right, you know, what size are you? <laughs> right. He wants different clothes. That's a theme yeah. throughout the movie. He's just super into fashion. He loves fashion. Love the suit. What was the girl? You said the girl was someone famous. Though. Tracy Lords. Right. And who's in everything in the who's 90s. Who's in everything in the 90s. Wade, she's the chick in the, yeah. the bloodbath. Everything. And it yeah. was it was her song. It's, uh, you know, that's playing in the background in this mm -hmm. club. So this has to be some form of cool, futuristic L.A. Yeah. Because there's this bartender that he walks up to. Amazing scene. He, he, that reminds me, and I'm watching this, uh, and I wonder, like, did they take this idea from in Passengers from this movie? He has a great exchange with the robot where he's like, You constitute one of my ancestors. I'm vaguely offended by that. Immediately like shoots the robot. Offended, but he's like giving him a drink. Why kill the robot? He's a serial killer. Like he has 200 serial killer brain things. He he's just likes to kill. Crazy. That's all that he loves. He DJs their screams. I'm not even making. No, so they're up. all. He's like programming Again, the machine. Again, I'm just gonna say that throughout this review. I'm he, not even making this shit up. He no. DJ screams. Well, why he makes would we them. Make this up. The movie made this up for us. <laughs> you can't. He makes them scream into the DJ thing. He's. What did you call he's, it? He's finger DJ. Fingering DJ. Because like, it's future. It's future. So he so touches these cool. weird. Bubbles. Yeah, yeah, all these like, bubbles. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's playing their screams. We're making this sound so much better than it, it is. It sounds better and it's... <laughs> it sounds this that shit crazy. executed. <laughs> okay, people. We got a lot of work to do. We have a symphony to compose. This is where you kind of start to see his personality as well. Like, you only saw him in the virtual scenario, yeah. and then you can see he's over the top and crazy. Like, he's like, he's he's totally nuts. He makes these all these, like, weird faces. He's always screaming. He, he loves lo to scream. Loves to scream. He's like, ah, everything he does. Ah! <laughs> This was one of his first U.S. movies. He wanted to make a stamp, like... 
He wanted to make something because he goes for I'm, you it. You know what? I'm actually happy. He recovered after this movie. He didn't recover. No one talks about this because everyone forgot it. I feel that happened. Like, both these guys are fine. Not not me. I didn't forget about this. Not, <laughs> not even, Adam. Not Let's begin. So Denzel and the therapist, they, so they show, up at, show the up at this nightclub and... No backup, of course. No backup. Don't send the cops in. Don't send well, the No, they in. do send cops. They send, but they, they send like three cops. Three cops. And they just don't even go over there. They just, you know, they're like, freeze! Please! Freeze! One, two, three! And so, you know, Parker goes in there alone and um, in this cool, like, 90s freight elevator. Yes. <laughs> Denzel is the best. So those three cops go down, immediately killed. Denzel goes down the cool 90s freight elevator. I love that. Uh, yeah. And then he just shoots him four times in the back. And, uh, he, and like, he just, this, like, jump over him. Like, oh, oh cool. It's awful. It's so 90s. Russell Crowe jumps, like, because he has superpowers, too. He can, they, like, they, jump. They, they, they never establish what... <laughs> What, what like what the limitations of this of this creature of this synthetic person is? Constantly, he's like <laughs> teleporting. <laughs> No, place. no, that's that sounds cooler than, than what he could do. He's not really doing it, but it's just done so poorly. It feels like he's teleporting. Like we're get again, we're go, we're loop back here. Yeah, but, we'll loop back. But, but so, all right, so there's a lot of scenes. He can he can he can take an uh, not an unlimited, but he can he can take like fifty shots. He can take fifty shots. He can jump through a he ceiling. He can jump really high. There's then, a there's a shot where you don't know that he has this ability, but he's like it's only like used one time. It's like Super Mario. You go like do 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 do, and he jumps through the ceiling. <laughs> he also jumps off a bridge and then he disappears and he does this shit constantly like just yeah. the kookiest jumps and stuff again we're going to later the ufc one he does another crazy like backflip thing there and i was just like wow well yeah then you learn this guy really he can't he can't die really he can't he takes a fall fine as He's, long as he eats glass as, as long as he sucks yeah, it up as with long his as he gets cgi glass. 90 tentacles then they go and they research i think they this is next they research the the so serial killer maker's place they go to they go to daryl the programmer's uh, uh, apartment house yes, on, the beach. on the beach and they check his computer yeah. and he just leaves it open too yeah it's not password protected no. they just got into it he just got the 200 serial killer faces yeah. just like on loop they don't even have to open it or click a program it's just there on the I screen gu I guess because he's been like building better SIDS after this so they're he again they do establish he loves SID yeah it's oh his god. favorite oh god yeah <laughs> more, more than anything more than anything he yeah. loves SID, Sid yeah <sighs> Do you like this, Daryl? Oh, Come on. Oh, Russell Crowe. <laughs> I love this guy. Russell Crowe is in peak Russell Crowe form here, too. Like, yeah. he's in good shape. This isn't like new Russell Crowe, which is very are fat. You, are you referencing the blatant Terminator butt Naked shot, thing? Butt butt shot, shot that yeah. he when he And comes he's out. tone. Yeah, he's tone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They go to the mall, and this mall, I pointed out to Adam, I was like, this mall is fantastic. This future mall has just shit all in the center of it. It's it's so bizarre, it's almost like a flea market. It might have been a flea market. Yeah. It's just, they didn't do a good establishing of where it is. But they just have like blenders and televisions in this pile. He starts noticing like all these cameras looking he, at him. Yeah, he all loves these, attention. All these cameras and TVs, and they're all on this, on on a news program. And then I think he tries to change it away from that. He just wants to see himself. And then this grunge rocker with 90s this like guy's... long hair, he just like, bro, don't mess with me. Don't fuck with me, man. And then he immediately just like snaps his yeah. neck. Everybody in this world is like, you know, it's not running for their for their lives. They're just kind of like, they're kind of like the simulation, the actual simulation. They're right. Useless. They like, you know, you deserve to get caught by sin. Or, A lot yeah. of them do, definitely. You're not you're not running for your life or anything. You're just standing there. Awful. He does this funny thing where he like is sticking out the hostage and then him going He's out. Like, Who's it, Parker? Are you gonna shoot me or her? <laughs> her. Don't do it, Parker. Help me. Denzel's trying to save her. All these hot people around, these you know, are just watching this happen. They shoot at the same time, and then Russell Crowe frames it to be like Denzel did it, which is 
crazy logic. Uh, but that's the moment where this woman, this B actress, is immediately goes like, "He did it! He killed her!" Oh my God, he shot oh, that woman! He's a cop! He's a cop! He did it! Apparently she was there. She saw the whole thing. They never show that. They never she was show it. <laughs> but she wa- she witnessed the whole she thing. She saw the whole thing. And now And then but she mentions that I saw it. It wasn't it wasn't Parker. It was Sid that shot her. Because I saw it happen. Yeah, well I got fifty other damn witnesses to say Parker shot her dead. Yeah, well how do you explain it? Earlier, just the scene we were talking about, she was against him. Now, out yeah. of nowhere, now she's, she's like defending she's like, him. Yeah, she's like, Parker. Parker. I'm, like, I'm, you know, let's let's do this. Let's He's a up. hero. Yeah. Were you angry about what had happened earlier at Lita? Were you attracted to violence as a child? How did you know Sid Six Point Seven would be in the Japanese restaurant? I can help you find Sid Six Point Seven. I pull all of the personnel files on Daryl Lindemeyer. I'm thinking we should we should start at Lindemeyer's apartment. Maybe that's what Sid wants you to think. Push you over the edge, make you slip up. Sid 6.7 isn't bound by programming anymore. The bullet exited the woman's chest. That means she was shot from the back. Parker couldn't have killed her. Sid 6.7 is still out there. You're locking up the one man who may be able to stop him. Hey, don't lock me up! Shitty therapist. So bad. Oh my god. So they load him up in the in the prison car and they're gonna bring him back to prison. Oh, gotta silence that phone. So he's in the truck going back to prison. He then finds out he... Well, I guess they established this earlier. I'm sorry. No. Interject this. Russell Crowe... Russell Crowe then... So you can edit all that nonsense out. <laughs> Russell Crowe stops Or maybe the, I won't. Maybe you won't. Hey, Parker. This one's for you. Hey, Parker. This one's for you. I think this is the point they show the full flashback, right? Yeah. This is the which, full secret flashback, which, which you don't get to see until this point. You get, like, glimpses of it. You see it every ten seconds. Every, every But you just know that Denzel's scenes. wife and kid are dead. That's all you get to know. See, Grimes used my Linda and uh, Christine to get to me. Matthew Grimes was this killer. A terrorist, almost. A terrorist. He's super political. He always kills people on camera in these super populated areas. And he has a camera crew there. And so Denzel infiltrates their secret hideout, wherever his wife and daughter are being held. And he sees his wife and daughter, you know, through the door. He hears them, actually. He hears them. He hears them. They're, they're like screaming. Faint, faint screams. He goes up to the door, he's, he sees the timer, he sees the ropes, they're tied up, and so he shoots off the lock, because that, that what, that's what works in movies. It's a movie, yeah, yeah, it's the 90s, yeah. If you can't get through a lock, you just shoot, shoot it. Shoot it, yeah. And or computers in this movie, you can't hack them, you just break them, you just shoot them. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Anybody use this chair? What are you doing? He goes to the door, he opens it, it's booby trapped, it explodes, his arm is, this is blown this is, up. This is like a horrible plan for these bad I mean, these bad guys, there's a bomb that goes off, they set off this bomb that's just down the hall from where they're having It's supposed this- to be like established that it's just gonna be that room, but still, it's a horrible plot. Yeah. And then his arm's blown off, this is how he oh, got the movie, metal arm. And this is where the movie, for me, felt very dark, because... They're telling this backstory, and his arm, his left arm, is completely has one gun. Yeah, is obliterated. So he's he he's he just turns into full Punisher mode. Ah! He is good though, and he tells the news team he's like duck. Stay down. Get down. He's not crazy where he's like psychotic. He's, he's not going to the room just shooting, shooting everybody. The, the news thing. He tells them to get down. He corners the terrorist guy. He shoots them and then. And then, yeah. And so the camera crew pops up right behind him. They're like, surprise! With a light. So he taps the news team. Yeah. That is why he goes to jail for, we assume, like 10 years. It's stupid. But it also... They, they it, deserve it, to die because you don't just pop out on a guy like that. Oh, no. And it, But it establishes <laughs> multiple great facts about our amazing hero. One, how he lost his arm. He got his super Metal Gear fucking arm. Which they never used. Uh, two scenes, I can think of, but not but well. It, it's like in that prison sequence uh, when they scan him and it's an arm. It looks like... like the from Winter Mortal, Soldier. It looks like Winter Soldier yeah. or, or Jax from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> 
So then this is the final act of the movie. He gets the call and he finds out that he doesn't have the poison. And Russell Crowe goes... He, he pulls up in a cable van that he's, yes. that he's stolen, dressed up as a cable man. And then the worst mom in the world... The worst her... mom because she leaves her daughter outside... Established uh, multiple times throughout the film. Hey, Mom. Hi, sweetheart. Bye, Mom. Bye. Mom. What? Bye. I'll be back as soon as I can. The therapist is just like, I'll see you later. And All the right. girl's like three and she's just, just sitting, sitting there. there on the steps yeah. of this house. Russell Crowe pulls up in a cable guy outfit to kidnap her. One of the friends of the show. <laughs> he goes to this network, to this TV network. And again, they cut to a shot of everybody in this control booth has been murdered. Has he again killed. has killed the directors, the producers, which make... No fucking sense. He's killed everybody that, that you rely you on to run a show. To film to, the to show. Keep, to keep the cameras going. He, he knows what he's doing because he, he's like hitting buttons. He films himself. He hits all the buttons, records it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Death TV. This is also an amazing thing that Adam pointed out. He had taken the time to make a patch. So somewhere between after letting... After letting... <laughs> After letting Denzel Washington free, he goes to somewhere to get like a, a patch made that says Sid 6.7. So, while we wait and watch the demise of young Karen Carter, let's have a talk with our studio audience. And then he holds the whole crew hostage. It's the ones that he didn't kill. The ones that he are, didn't kill. Are, of course, he being, shoots a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Enjoying the show, Ed? Then everyone's outside, you know, and the cops are doing a great job just keeping people. There's like maybe one or two cops that are like holding just a couple people or a Don't crowd. come in, yeah. Don't and there's of course TVs right below in the lobby, yeah. which everyone can watch Everyone's watching upstairs. the show. And Daryl even shows up to the show. He's been hiding out the whole time in like a dingy motel. Motel. Fantasizing just about Russell Crowe. Like, oh, Loving it. Oh, oh Sid. Russell oh. Crowe. The SWAT shows up, and now that they think that Parker, Denzel Washington, is the bad guy because they think he broke out. No, it's like a, they completely blanked out, like that Sid has Sid has hostage. hostages. Oh, upstairs. There, there's Parker! Bars! Go! Go! He does this like crazy matrix it's move. Like slow motion. Slow motion through these fountains. Yeah. Again, in Century City yeah, or downtown. And they're shooting glass. It's so like, oh, 90s action. Action. Ah, and they're shooting him in this elevator and they run up, the SWAT team runs up to the elevator. They're like, ah, oh, can we catch him in time? No, damn it. Shit. There's like one elevator that goes up. They're like, no, let's go to that Thank elevator. God they didn't like, get there like a second earlier where they hit the button and then it opens and Denzel's just like, yeah, uh, like you, you got me. You got me. <laughs> the hell happened to the phone lines? Where's my audience? Where's my audience? So Denzel goes up and then, of course, immediately again, just blows holes in Russell Crowe because he doesn't announce to like all the other cops just go freeze. No, he's, Denzel just comes Denzel in. Denzel is is the one person that at least doesn't announce himself when he shows up Always. to a scene. Parker. <laughs> Jumps through the ceiling. <laughs> I literally, my jaw just went like, what? Like, I was like, Adam, did he just jump through the ceiling? <laughs> because they never established he could oh my do God. that. He jumps into the ceiling. Oh. Yeah, and uh. then. <laughs> Denzel's chasing they're him. Somehow, they're somehow now on the roof of this The building. roof on the building. The logic of this movie is so bad. So we've already established Russell Crowe is pretty much invincible. He can jump through the ceiling. He can pick up a guy with one arm. That's how strong he is. Denzel is just a regular dude. But again, every time Denzel shows up, Russell Crowe 
runs from him, which is insane. Because any other person he comes against, like SWAT teams, cops, he kills them because yeah. he can take the bullets and then just feed on glass again. So the logical thing for Russell Crowe, if he's like the T-1000, yeah, yeah, so if, he, like if he's like the T-1000, yeah. you know you're invincible, just go up to Denzel, take a couple shots, Denzel will be like, blah, 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 yeah. and then you just be like, bam. Yeah. End of movie. They're ducking. They're shooting at each other. It's like Sid has been programmed to run away from Denzel and just like do this like thing where it's, where, where the, like kids like are running from each other. Yeah, it's and awful. And never confronts them. And again, and then the, this helicopter the, is spinning is like around. It's spinning around and they're firing, you know, at at both Denzel. They don't care. They're both bad guys now. Why doesn't his his cop buddy Shut like uh, William Forsythe's character just get on the radio like, hey guys, up there in the helicopter, don't shoot. Shoot at Parker. Yeah. Shoot at Sid, or at least, you know... Again, they probably flipped that coin, and they're like, oh, we hate Parker. Yeah. yeah. Call him off. Get that goddamn helicopter down here right now. Yes, sir. There was a shot before that where Sid already took, like, how many hits? And then they get to these... onto these fans, and apparently he's, he's strong again for no reason. Where's the girl? It's not gonna be the same this time, Parker. She's not your daughter. They already, too, established that he's like has some sort of super strength where he can jump, he can hold people up, but then he has this one-on-one -on -one fight with Denzel, and it's like he's struggling. You know, yeah. like, again, he should just overpower Denzel. Denzel hasn't taken any hits. No. Come on, Parker! He jumps on, on this moving platform that goes up for, and down, yeah. For scaffoldings. That, yeah. that, they that, watch the buildings. Yeah. yeah. Well, buildings, Denzel yeah. grabs him, twists him on a rope, yeah. and gra jumps off like die hard. He gets up, he's like dusting all the glass off. He looks down and there's just like Sid cut into pieces. So he's dead on glass and then Denzel who's again normally a very smart guy in this yeah. film he pieces together well, he's he, always one step ahead of Sid one like, step ahead he goes up to Sid and literally is just like he puts his face up to him he's like he's like tell me where the little girl he's is he's like I can't hear you so Sid, of course, is still alive. He starts regenerating. He and he's, pulls him down to he pulls, his feet. He's about to stab him with his own glass. Yeah. And then Denzel reaches behind his brain. He's like, at that moment, he's like, you know what? I really don't care where the girl is. I'm just gonna. <laughs> he reaches behind it and he pulls out the thing. And now, in, I think, probably to me, the worst twist of cinematic history since he couldn't get the information from Russell Crowe. We cut, we're back now at the scene where they're fighting on the roof. Yeah. What happened? Why are they on the roof? Yeah. Who knows? It, Again, they established that this little girl is probably gonna die in like two hours. Like, yes. we should have mentioned that earlier. So Mr. Barnes, by destroying Sid, You've effectively lost any chance you had of finding the little girl. The twist is, they've taken the cube, put in Russell Crowe back into a virtual it, simulation. Back into the simulation. So he, he can, doesn't know this. He doesn't know this. Russell Crowe's the only one that doesn't know this. So they can trick him into revealing uh -huh. where the little girl is. So the therapist is like, you killed Denzel by throwing him. And Denzel, yeah, he throws Denzel off the building. <laughs> yeah. And De he lands like, you splat. know, splat. So the therapist is like, oh my god, you killed him, where's my daughter? And like, Sid is like, guess what, she's right here. Oh, Karen! <laughs> Mommy's here! <laughs> she's at the fans right below where they fought. If two adults, like, let's say you're a little girl, right? And you're like, tied up and there's bombs everywhere. Two adults land on this giant fan and they're struggling. Wouldn't you yell? She had a gag on her, I think. No, she doesn't, because- She has a gag. No, they talk. Well, no, he pulls it off. Does he? Yeah. We might have to go back pretty and sure, check that. I'm pretty sure. Then he pulls off the gag? Yeah. I think you're wrong. Karen! I think you're wrong. 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 Everybody fucking right! Listen, I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? And he gets down, 
and tells her not to move. Wait, 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 wait. don't move, don't move. He sees lasers or tripwires. Yes, uh, around and a the camera girl. and a computer. Yes, and so many things that would already immediately had would have blown them up. No, it's it's Denzel. It's Parker. He knows he's dealt with. He's this. dealt with this. He knows what he's doing. Again, he is Sid, the two hundred serial killer AI computer programs equal. Uh uh uh. I thought of that one too. A little screen pops up with with Sid with it's Russell on their knees, like, oh, I thought of everything. Anything you do, I thought of. Which I immediately said, if you what if you're Sid and you're a serial killer, why program it to say that? Just program it to blow up. Just kill him you know like it's always like he's like the I fucking riddler where he never tries to kill denzel he just sets up these scenarios because it get out. So I know he loves the game and shit. but still man like left it like, like, at least make it blow up at one minute at the countdown it, like, I'm a serial hang on baby everything's gonna be okay i love you here try to get into the main operating system and we set the eternal clock. The therapist is like, you gotta, you, you gotta connect to the bomb. He pulls out a random, like a glow stick uh, uh, wire, some random wire in his arm. And never been shown before that this is there, never been established that he has computer work. Con con like conveniently just, uh, yeah, that, that Parker knows what the hell he's doing with this computer and this bomb and. It's the output now, which one's the output? Which one's the output? And so he plugs in and he's like, oh shit, it didn't work. Because then Russell Crowe's like, I thought of that. Uh, uh, uh. I thought of that one too. Oh, oh God. <laughs> but then you find out the clock hits zero it, and it repeats. Yeah, it just jumps back to a time and then the recording plays again. Uh, uh, uh. It's working. It's working? You're okay? Okay. We're okay? Guess what? Denzel has done it. He has beaten the bomb. He got the little girl out. And then again, in, in weird logic, you would think you would have to like keep that going because they still have like lasers and all this shit going. But nope, he just opens the door, lets the little girl out. SWAT's there, the therapist is there. They never have a romantic connection. He just gives the girl there. I'm glad they did. He pats her, <laughs> pats her on the shoulder. He's like, thanks buddy. And then Denzel goes to the center of the building, he has this deep thought. He has thought. this like reflection. He's thinking, all right, should, uh, I've still got Sid's cube He looks at his hand. GameCube card of Sid, yeah. And you're like thinking to yourself like, oh my God, do we need a sequel to this movie? Yeah. I don't know what else to say about this movie. How was it for you watching it now, so many years it later? It reminds me of why the hell did I like this movie as a kid? Well, you were like 11 though. Yeah. yeah. It probably I, didn't take a lot back for a little Adam at 11 to like, you know, it's probably just took blood action, your first rated art yeah, movies. Yeah, it was, know? yeah, it was my, I mean, my mom, uh, I didn't see this in theater, but we, she let me rent it from Blockbuster. <laughs> I thought it was great. I loved it as a kid. And I thought it was cool <laughs> to say that now. It's you so, were a kid, though. So, so ridiculous. Nobody has the movie I want. Hey, if it's on video, Blockbuster probably has it. I mean, we have over 10,000 videos. Wow. To me, it's also just a time capsule of the 90s. Yes. It is so 90s. Very 90s. From the dialogue to what happens, to the violence, to the action scenes, to the cheesy one-liners, to the music, to the outfits, to the haircut. You know, I really didn't like that video. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear about that. Was there anything in particular? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, it was the language. The bad language was a little too much for my taste. Everything about this, it's, it's literally like we uncovered this time capsule of 1995 and here it is. Denzel Washington. Just because I'm carrying around the joy of killing your family inside me doesn't mean we can't be friends. Virtuosity. It was a trip. Yeah, it was a trip. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, you look like you could use some help. Yeah, hi. Uh, my wife sent me in there for a movie and I can't remember the name. Ew, that's it's tough. Fun. Good luck. Thanks. 
And then the good news is about this Adam is it's recyclable. So uh, like you can so I can, throw this in I the can trash. recycle this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you got a good video, it's bound to get better. Take care. My day will get better when this line starts moving. <laughs>